Hi everyone, welcome back to Wesno's Tech News and Reviews. Today we're doing a review and comparison of two very good smartwatches. So, today we've got the Amasfer GTS, the original version, the one that came out on the back end of 2019 and is going to be going in a head-to-head -head with the Amasfer GTS 2e. Both smartwatches have very sharp prices and they look amazing. In fact, they look almost identical. By almost, I do mean almost. Let's get into it, let's compare them, let's see which one actually brings more value to you. If you are new to Wesno's tech news and reviews, we talk about the latest tech news. We do brutally honest reviews and share hacks and tricks along the way. The weather is getting there, but it's still a bit chilly and I think the skies are going to break out with a bit more rain today so i will be filming these watches outside today but i will be doing a bit more explaining inside so i'll see you there the two watches do look kind of similar but we know that looks can be deceiving so let's just get into the head-to-head -head comparison let's kick off with the design then we're going to have a look at the display and then the features and functions let's get into it let's just take a look at them from the front, the two watches are all too similar. Squarish faces, rounded corners, and a single button on the right of the watch face. Even the straps look and feel almost identical. Let's take a closer look. The GTS 1's watch case is aluminium alloy. The 2.5D glass curves down and looks almost seamless as it covers the watch case. For a rather large watch, the weight is just 25 grams. So, the GTS 2E actually has very similar specs but it just takes the GTS-1 more simple and straightforward design and adds finesse and a very premium feel. Dimensions wise the GTS-1 is 43.3 by 36.3 millimeters while GTS-2E is 42.8 by 35.6 millimeters. Considering the display size is the same the bezels are just slightly thinner on the newer model. If we look at the straps, they are the 20 millimeter silicon generic click-on straps. Nice and simple and identical on both, except for the clasps. So if on the GTS-1 the clasp is plastic, which is mm, not that premium, on the newer model you do get a steel clasp. And that just feels, again, more premium. And now let's check out the displays because they are absolutely awesome. 1.65 inch displays. Both are large enough for easy reading of health stats, texts, weather and so forth. Both have ambient light sensors for auto brightness and there's always on display on both. Another point to mention is the resolution. Both feature the same specs with 341 ppi at 348 by 442 pixels. Yet the GTS 2E colors are more vivid, the graphics are more crisp and sharp. And that could actually be due to the difference in the actual displays. So if on the GTS-1 we just have the AMOLED display, on the GTS-2e we actually have a Super Retina AMOLED display. And I'm not quite sure about what the technical difference is, but the fact is, you can see it when we put the two watches together, the GTS-2e is just so much more crisp, it's just so much more alive and the graphics are just they're jumping out at you. Because if all the infographics on the first model are slightly sort of, you know, clunky and big, on the GTS-2e everything is just so fine, it just looks, feels, I'm gonna say it again, I'm sorry, but it's just, it looks and feels premium. and. In regards to CPU, both run quite nicely. Everything is smooth, there's no lag as you transition from screen to screen. But again, the look, the feel, just, yeah, it goes to the GTS 2E. Downloadable faces are available on both watches, including the custom faces whereby you can download any photo from your phone. To summarize, the GTS 2E has a design that is just more modern. It just more in line with the times. The display, well, it seems that it has the same resolution, but still it's just more fine. The colors are more crisp, more vivid. The infographics are much more neat, less clunky. So all in all, the clear winner is the GTS 2E. But now let's have a look at the features and functions and hopefully it will clear up the picture for us. 
To start us off on the features and functions, let's take a look at sport modes. So we know that both watches actually feature 5 ATM water resistance as well as having dual GPS. So that's great. But neither the GTS 1 nor the GTS 2E has any storage allocated for music. It's just music from your phone. So it's just music controls. The good thing is, is that both watches have gold-based sport profiles. That is absolutely excellent. But on the GTS 1, we only have 12 sport modes. And although they are very useful and they're sort of the ones that you would be using on a day-to-day -day basis, like running, rowing, walking, etc. If you recall, we made an earlier comparison and test uh, between the Honor Watch ES as well as the Amazfit GTS, the first one. And I was playing tennis with my coach and the fact is, on the Amazfit GTS, we had to use a freestyle workout mode because simply there was no tennis. While on Honor, there was no problem because there's 95 sport modes. Well, on the GTS 2E, there's actually 90 sport modes and tennis is one of them. On the GTS 2E, real-time tracking and analysis is available, and yes, you can also access your music controls while exercising. There's auto recognition for six sport modes, so outdoor running, treadmill walking, outdoor cycling, pool swimming, and elliptical workouts. On top of that, you get to choose if you want to auto pause. You also get the smart alerts, aka workout reminders. Essentially, for different exercises, you can expect different types of alerts. If we take walking as an example, you can set the preferred heart rate zone or a heart rate cap. You are guided to stay within the range set by haptic vibrations. For running workouts, you can actually set a pace you'd like to keep to. So this is very useful if you are a runner. Say you're going for a 5k or 10k run. You can set a pace that you do not want to fall under. And this is just useful because if you do slow down at some point, the watch will vibrate and if you look at the actual wrist, you will see the actual pace you're running at. Both watches get Pi, so the personal activity index, just like any other Amazfit and Xiaomi wearable. Pi score is calculated by processing data about your heart rate and activity intensity, sleep metrics and other health data. This single value score provides a customized health evaluation for each user based on their unique health data. The rule of thumb is, as long as you keep your score above 100 points, it statistically means that you're 25% less prone to getting heart disease. So make sure that your pie is above 100. Both watches can actually do your sleep monitoring as well, but if the GTS first version only shows you your deep and light sleep, the GTS 2E can actually go in for the three sleep stages. So your deep, your light, as well as REM sleep. On top of that, you actually get insights about your sleep and recommendations on how to improve it. Of course, you can't see that from the watch face, but you will be able to see those from the Zep app. Now, I don't want to go into the basic or the core functions such as your timer, your stopwatch, your weather widgets. No, let's focus on the advanced, on the premium features. Well, the features where you actually get a smartwatch as opposed to a fitness tracker. And this is where we're gonna have to say, that's it, there's nothing special left on the GTS except for the compass and the barometer. But on the GTS 2E, of course, you still get the compass and the barometer, but a couple of other very nice and very advanced features. Let's get into those. I think we need to stop and talk about the breathing app just for a second. The fact is, if you recall, on the GTS 2 Mini as well as GTS 2, so the most premium smartwatch in the range, well, as well as the GTR 2, we all have breathing apps. Now, that app was actually really useful, right? So you can go into it and you can do guided timed breathing exercises anywhere from one to five minutes. Now, on the GTS 2E, they've removed that app and instead of it, they've put in a temperature app. Now, I've been trying to use that temperature app, but it just, it doesn't make much sense to me because it measures the temperature of your skin. Well, let's say I'm wearing it outside and the temperature is showing plus five degrees Celsius. My skin temperature, I would imagine to be somewhere between 36 and 36.9 degrees Celsius. Well, 
the temperature I get is somewhere 20, 25 degrees Celsius. So it's averaging the temperature of the environment around the watch or just under the watch. But obviously the colder it is outside, uh, the cooler my skin will be. So how usable is that app? What's the purpose of it? I'm not sure. I'm sure there's probably some long-term goals and it will be developed on the newer models. But for now, I would have preferred if the breathing app actually stayed on the GTS 2E. But let's move on. Let's talk cool features. The GTS 2E has a microphone, so you can perform offline voice operations on your watch, basically doing things like turning on sport modes or opening apps. Well, this is actually very cool because for 150 bucks, you're getting yourself a watch with voice control and voice commands. And we know that Alexa is coming via an OTA update as well. A welcome addition to the GTS 2E is the Pulse Ox, aka Blood Oxygen Saturation Monitor. Unfortunately though, it is just the on-demand or spot measurements. So you basically have to set up your wrist, you click on it and you get a spot measurement. A spot measurement means that it's just at a point in time. So you can't have your measurements taken while you're asleep or during a, or during a workout. And that's a problem because really these values at a point in time, they have a very limited value add. But once again, it's better than nothing. Because if you recall the GTS, one as well as the GTR one simply didn't have the pulse ox monitor while the main competitors of a mass fit smartwatches from the likes of Honor and Huawei always did have the SPO2 monitor so it's here it's a welcome addition value add not much but hey anyway right so now we have basically covered the design we covered the display we've covered the features and functions I've told you as much as I could about the main differences between the GTS 1 as well as the GTS 2e now as I mentioned at the start there is a price difference of about 50 bucks or 30 quid now that's about a third of a price more but I think that you're getting much more value from the GTS 2e than on the GTS and do I think it's worth more than 30% price hike definitely stress monitor spo2 even if it's on demand or spot readings it's still valuable you also get a temperature gauge i'm not yet sure how to use it but it's there you also get auto activity recognition for six sport modes instead of 12 sport profiles available on the actual watch on the gts 2e you've got 90 that's massive that's got you covered I think voice commands are a great addition and it's very premium. The fact is when you're going out for a run, let's say you've got gloves on because it's freezing outside, well you can start a workout simply by speaking to your wrist. That is great. As well as that, we know that Alexa is coming in some future OTA update and that future is probably not too far off because most of the range already does have Alexa. So if we wanted to find out which watch brings you more value, I think it's a no-brainer. The GTS 2E does it, and it does so with style. And is it worth 150 bucks? Well, we can consider the competition. There's not much out there for that price which gives you as much as the GTS 2E gives you. Thanks for watching. If you did like the video, then please drop us a like. And if you want to see more of the same, then please subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.